Take a seat. We just got finished singing that, that song, Overcome. And I'm looking on Facebook, and I'm looking on um, in your guys' lives, and I'm actually looking in your guys' eyes when you come in. And I know that there's a lot of hurt that's going on. How many guys can honestly say right now that there is something in your life that you really want God to step up and, and overcome this situation? Raise your hand. All right. Almost every single person raised their hand. Because here's the deal. Overcoming our sin, overcoming these obstacles, overcoming these situations are something that we have to understand that we are not the ones who have the power to overcome it, but Jesus Christ in us who gives us the power through His Spirit. And I'm, as the shepherd of this church, and we're going to get into that in a second, I hurt for you. I really, truly do. Because when I look at you, Catalyst Church, I don't see necessarily the joy of the Lord in your life. What I see is weight. I see slumped spirits. I see hurts. Because we all have different people that we know that... that we're praying for and people that are praying for us and before I get started my message I'm just gonna I'm, I think I got to pray and 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 soften this load in your guys minds and your hearts because here's the deal I was going to be my calendar we have preaching calendars and a creative team and, and all this stuff setting up the messages and everything once again, God said, change it. So Monday or Tuesday, I changed it. I was going to be preaching on Jesus is our judge, which would have been a very heavy, uh, or God's judging us type of thing. But as Rachel even talked, yes, it's true that he's are going to be our judge in the end day. But today I'm going to be talking about how Jesus is our shepherd. And I think that's what we need right now. Many of you guys are going through so much stuff, and I know, and I see it on Facebook. You call me, and you tell me, and I'm like, God, what can I do as the shepherd of this church? I want to protect them. I want to guide them. I want to direct them. But, but, but what God revealed to me over this last week is, David, yes, you are the shepherd pastor of this church, but David, shut up and move out of the way and let me, the Mac Daddy shepherd, step up and help some people. So today, let me pray. And this is what I want you to do during this prayer. I want you to think about those things that are weighing you down. Because as we just sang, we sang about promises. We talked about how majestic he is. We talked about he'll never let go. And then we, we sang a song about how we overcome um, our lives through the testimony of what he's going to do and what he has done. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. Well, Rachel set that up like three weeks ago or whatever. But I'm telling you what. We, because of Jesus Christ, are able to overcome all the crap that you're going through, okay? You need to just realize that, guess what? You've got a great shepherd who's going to be walking alongside you. And I pray after today that you will have a, a, a more positive spirit, no matter what's going on, and have an uplifted heart. Sound good? Okay, three of you guys. Okay, let me pray. Lord Jesus, I do pray for today. Lord, may the words out of my mouth be a testimony of what you're going to do and what you can do. Lord Jesus, you love us so very much. We are stupid, idiotic, foolish sheep that don't know what we're doing without our shepherd. So Lord, right now, if there's any sheep that have wandered away and are not doing what they need to do, I, Lord, I pray that you'll grab your big old stick and pull them back today. Lord, if there's any sheep with broken legs and broken hearts and broken souls, Lord, renew them in your love and in your graces. May this not be a message of condemnation or a message of, of judgment or a message, a heavy message. May this be a liberating, free message because, God, you're our shepherd. You're there. You want to help us even though we do stupid things. Free us today from our minds and our hearts and our stuff that we're going through. And may we trust in you, our great shepherd. I pray all this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Turn to Psalm chapter, guess what? 23. All right, I'm going to turn to Psalm 23. It's on page 382 in your Bible, Red Bible. If you don't have a Bible, that Red Bible is yours to keep. It's your Bible. Um, I have been in the ministry for forever. 
I mean, it's 10, 11, 12. How many years, Rachel? Like forever. Okay. But I've done a lot of funerals. I've done um, teenage funerals. I've done old people funerals. Um, really old. So those are the guys who are thinking that you're old. Or ancient people's funerals. And guess what? The number one verse that is always asked for us to talk about and, and, to, and to present. Psalm 23. And when I'm, I'm, I'm reading this, I've read it through a thousand times, being in the ministry and just even a, being a Christ follower. And I'm reading this over and I'm like, there's, I read this and it's like not sad. It's not sad at all. Why on earth? Because I think people are trying to like do Psalm 23 to encourage because all it says in there, even though I passed, passed through the valley of the shadow of death, oh, there were death. So I'm going to just throw that out there and have an entire funeral about this. Guys, Psalm 23 is the most encouraging chapter almost in the entire Bible. Don't ever think that you're, when you read Psalm 23, it's like death, funeral, sadness. I pray again after today that you will be so excited about the shepherd that is guiding you. So let's go ahead. Psalm 23, starting in verse 1. It says this. The Lord is my what? Shepherd. Paul's shepherd. Okay. A shepherd, it's very difficult. We don't have shepherd wandering around with like donkeys and cattle and sheep just walking around here. Um... And so it's very hard to kind of relate to a shepherd. How many guys have ever seen an actual true shepherd before? True shepherd? Okay, a couple of you guys, all right. But the rest of us might not be able to relate. So I did a little bit of research about what the shepherd is because I wanted to make sure we understand the shepherd because it says the Lord, who is Jesus, the Lord is our shepherd. So what is the shepherd? A shepherd was actually a lowly person, not hired. It was hired to take care of the master's sheep, the master's sheep. They weren't actually necessarily his, but he was there to protect, guide, and protect the sheep. He was there to protect them, and he was put in charge of controlling the atmosphere. And if one wanders away, what is that shepherd going to do? He's going to go give them because he is responsible for the sheep. He is solely responsible for the sheep. So listen closely. I think we need to understand from the very get-go that the shepherd is not this, this guy just walking around. He's got a duty. And the duty is protect the sheep, to guide the sheep, to take them from one grazing land to another. If there's a bear or a lion, oh my, type of thing, he's supposed to whoop them tail. He's supposed to get after them. And But here's the deal. The sheep, the sheep <laughs> are such stupid animals. Stupid. I mean, I don't know, God, I think you're having a sense of humor with us comparing us to sheep, but we are called his sheep. Let me tell you a little bit about sheep, a little bit. They are one of the most scared, frightened animals on the face of the planet. It even comes to, and we're going to talk about them in a second, when they come to a watering hole, it has to be completely what? Calm has to be calm because even if there was a single ripple what will the sheep not do they will not drink because they're scared to death actually stories have been told about sheep who uh, farmers do this where they run up to a sheep who is unaware and by the way most sheep is very unaware of what's going on around them and they go frighten them and they get so scared that they flip upside down that was their defensive role. And guess what? The sheep are not strong enough without the shepherd to turn back around. So what happens to the sheep? They die. So not only are they scared, they're unobservant about what's going on. They focus in on bang, ba, 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 ba. Okay, that's what it's supposed to be. Bang. Okay. Uh, they're, 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 they're in their own little world, kind of like Americans are. They're in their own little world, and they're going from place to place to place. And what they do is they actually follow other sheep. So if the head sheep follows the shepherd, guess what the rest of the sheep will do? Probably follow the shepherd. 
But there comes times where the shepherd is doing something else and all of a sudden the lead sheep um, decides to go off or just a couple other, oh, I'm going to follow them. I'm going to go over here. And the main flock is over here. So a couple of them are walking and they're so in their world and they're focused. And stories have been told about sheep falling off cliffs because they are unaware of what's going on around them. You've heard the catchphrase, would you follow somebody and jump off the cliff with them? And they're like, no, I'd never do that. But many of us do because we're stupid sheep. We, so don't just say I'm pointing at you saying you're stupid. We are stupid, stupid sheep. They're dumb. They're in their own world. They're followers. And they are actually one of the most dirty animals. Have you ever seen a sheep right before? There's, there's a, a sheep in the back. Okay. All right. Have you, have, you, have you ever seen a sheep right before it gets sheared? Yeah? All right. It's disgusting. I mean, they're, they're crumpled like puke and, and poop and stuff all over them. And the, 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 when, they're, when they're out in the wilderness or whatever, they don't clean themselves. The shepherd actually comes around and attempts to clean the sheep because they cannot clean themselves. The next series we're going to be talking about... Um, uh, on freedom, we're going to be talking exactly about that, how you and I are not free in ourselves, but only Jesus Christ can free us in our lives. We're going through the book of Galatians next. But when Jesus talks about how he is the shepherd, we need to understand this, that he wants to guide us, he wants to protect us, but we need to humble ourselves and realize the following. We are scared in our own little world, dirty, nasty, ignorant people compared to God. If we have any inkling whatsoever that we think as little sheep can wander off by ourselves and think that we're going to be protected by our own self and our own good, guess what's going to happen to that literal sheep? A hawk is going to come, a bear is going to come, a lion is going to come and eat that sheep up and I think right now some of you guys are wandering off and the warning signs God is giving you and saying hey you're going off too far you need to come back the shepherd is there and the shepherd is actually looking after you and trying to find you and some of you guys right now need to understand that the shepherd loves and wants to protect you so today, we need to understand completely that the Lord is our shepherd. I could actually just stop right there and call it a day because those five words are just so powerful. But let's continue. The Lord is our what? Shepherd. I shall not be in want. In your red Bibles, it says, I lack nothing. I don't lack anything. In some of the other versions, it kind of says the same thing. And I'll pause right there. I want you to write down this down. It says this. Jesus provides all we need. This is point number one. Jesus provides all we need so that we will not what? And I think that's a very interesting concept. Because literally, I have all that I need. A couple weeks ago, actually been about a month ago, our van just started to just go kaput. I mean, it just... I think it was like three weeks ago. It stopped driving and everything else was working. You probably saw it on Facebook, my plea of help and prayer. And I was freaking out and I threw it immediately online and says, we need to probably buy another car and everything like this because that's what we need. Long story short, God fixed the van for free. Three days later on, guess what? The engine light came back on. <laughs> We brought it into the shop and actually the answer man right over here. And we brought him to the shop. He's like, hey, check it out. Here's the part. It's like $119. And I, it, I normally charge like 200 for three or four hours of labor or whatever. But I, I'm going to charge you $50. So our van now is completely fine until probably tomorrow. But completely fine. <laughs> we have what we need. It's 120 some thousand miles on it. We have what we need. We don't desire another car. Because what has the shepherd done for us? He provided what we need. And this passage says this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. 
If you are in this room right now and you are wanting stuff that the shepherd does not want you to get, two things. Either you're going to get it and you're going to face the consequences for giving it. Or you're not going to get it because the shepherd is providing something only that you need. And I think this is something really heavy on my heart as, as, as a missionary kid going out in all these third world countries. I can honestly tell you the truth. And where's, where's Joe Ellington? Or Joe, are you back there? Joe, are the people in, in the Burmese people, do they have much? Do they have everything that they need? They have what they need. Maybe not what they want. But are they happy? Absolutely. It's amazing to me to see us as Americans. I'm wanting this new thing. I'm wanting this new thing. I'm wanting the new iPhone. And you're like, I don't even know how to use it like three-fourths of the time. But I, version 7 and 8 and 9, I want, I want, I want. All you need is 2G. You just need to be able to call somebody. You just need to be able to text somebody. You might not even need to do that. You just use the mail system, which is very expensive in, in that case. But listen, you, don't, you do not need to want anymore if Jesus is our shepherd. Because if he is guiding you a certain way, you're not going to want anything else other than what the shepherd needs you to have. If we have the mindset that we need to go ahead and want, 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 we're not following the shepherd. Because I believe with everything inside of me that you will never need to want again because you have everything that you need. I'm going to say that again. I don't think if you are truly following the shepherd that you will be in want. You're not going to, yeah, it would be nice to have something else, but not in, the, in, not in the form of, oh, I'm going to work so very, 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 very hard so I can get a new car. I'm going to work so very, very, very um, um, hard so that I can get a better job or this, that, and the other. Maybe God is just keeping you here in this zone so that you can just rely on Him and all your needs will be taken care of. If you are wanting more than you are actually needing, you're probably not following the shepherd. The next thing I want you guys to write down is this. It is always greener and calmer where the shepherd, keyword, makes you lay. Write this down. It's, this, is, this is awesome. It's always greener and calmer where the shepherd, what? Makes us lay. Verse 2, he, talk about the shepherd, what's the next word? Makes. If you have a pen, highlighter, mascara, whatever, just circle that word makes. Circle the word makes. Because I, after reading this a hundred times, have missed that word. And that word is not anything other than God's provision for us. And it says this, he makes us lie down in green pastures he leads us leads me beside the calm or quiet waters he restores my soul he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul i've got two kids that are one of the most disobedient children on the face of the planet There are many times, and they know this, when we get out of the van, we have automatic doors that pop open, they just automatically jump out, and Rachel and I, we walk out into the road to make sure that there's no traffic, and then what is the safe thing for them to do? Grab your hand. The safe thing, and we've taught them all along, that the, the best and safest way is to grab the hand so that we can guide our children through the crazy Walmart parking lot where old ladies or young swerve around the corner and they don't care. They just want the closest thing and then they go ahead and put their handicap sticker up top and say, oh, I'm handicapped. And they're walking around fine, whatever. But they want that parking spot up close. So we're walking up, but there's sometimes my children don't think, go figure, they don't think they jump out of the car. Ethan thinks that he's going to get an angry bird. Madison thinks that she's going to get makeup, whatever. She's like, 
8 turning on like 52. But we, we have our hands up. Immediately I go like this. And then one day Madison just starts taking off. I mean, just crazy taking off like crazy pastor's kid just takes off and there comes a car swinging around and I'm like Madison stop and she just keeps running I'm like you're going to be grounded she's like er. <laughs> and literally the car swings back around I saw the danger even before it came but she was in her own world she thought that she didn't need the protection of the father but she did. She's eight. And even when she's 16 years old, my girl's going to be holding my hand if she's around me. And you think I'm joking? I am serious because I'm not going to let any foolish older young person in Walmart parking lot kill my kid. I would rather die and protect my child and be able to pull her around or pull him around and say, protection. The word make there in that verse is such a powerful verse. Because if we're following the shepherd, if he truly is our shepherd, then this is what's going to happen. He's going to make us stay. He's going to make us hold, our, hold his hand. He's going to force us to do things that are uncomfortable. But where he makes you stay will cause calmness and greener lands and greener life because the purpose of the shepherd is to feed and protect his flock and he's going to do everything he can to say this green grass is perfect for you and what us as American sheep do we peek our head up and then we look and say it looks greener where on the other side and we look and say it looks calmer over there it looks greener over there and that's what we do in other people's lives and other things we're like I can't believe they are not going through the things that we are going through I wish we were them I wish I had what they had I wish I was as calm as them but what you don't know is they might be going through so much struggle so much strife so much bad stuff that but they put on their christian mask they put on everything's okay but in their heart and mind they wish they were you where the shepherd lays you is uncomfortable at times sometimes the shepherd makes it seem like it's not good for you but i can tell you the truth if he makes us as sheep stay still because what we might not see in our own little world is the shepherd standing up strong. He sees the vision. He sees the landscape. And he's like, we're going to wait here for 10 minutes because there's an alligator going by. We're going to stay here, eat, and have a good time. By the way, I'm going to lead you through this calm water. And I, as I already talked about, the shepherd leads us to a place where we're not necessarily going to be scared. If you are scared of your circumstances right now, guess what? You're probably not following the shepherd. He will make you lie down in green pastures, even though you don't think it's green. He will make you lie behind and stay at calm waters. Even though you still might be scared, it's calm. And he's going to wait there until it's calm enough so that you can be rehydrated re-energize and I love what it says at the end of that passage that verse it says he restores my soul how many of you guys rhetorical question really needs a restoration in your soul just a, a just a come to Jesus time one of these relocation of the heart where you say my soul is broken my soul is hurting my soul is scared my soul is whatever and you said I just need to have a calm soul a greener soul a refreshed soul and if that is you follow the shepherd because the shepherd will restore your soul he will hydrate you he will feed you. He will protect you. 
but he will put you exactly where you need to be so that you are safe and sound. You wander away from that, you will be scared. You wander away from that, you will be hungry. You wander away from that, you'll be thirsty for something that fills your heart. Guess what? How many people, how many people that you know are thirsty for a, a heart that is filled? Uh, we, t- we have this idea of, of we need to fill our heart with lust. We need to fill our heart with material. We need to fill our heart with all this stuff. And no, you don't because that's a want, not a need. May I come to you and say, guys, please follow the shepherd. Follow him. He will put you in greener pastures, in calm waters, and he'll restore your soul. Next point is this. Jesus shows us how, Jesus shows us the way of righteousness for his glory. Jesus shows us the way of righteousness for his glory. Do you know what this thing is that I'm holding in my hand? It, it's, it's a Bible. Do you know what the sole purpose is of this Bible? The sole purpose of this Bible is to guide us. To steer us towards righteousness. In other words, to do the right things. To guide us in what we should or should not say. And how, like, the, like we're talking about Malachi, the love letter for you. And he's loving us so much because he wants to make us righteous in his sight. But then this is what it says in this passage. It says, he guides me in the path of righteousness for what? His name's sake. Here's your guidance. But again, this is how we act. I have enough of Jesus to get by. I have enough to know that the shepherd would lead me this way and not this way. But if he, our shepherd, is going to truly guide us, we need to sit down and find out, okay, what am I supposed to do about this situation? How how am I supposed to do this? And that's why at Catalyst Church, we offer Bible studies. We offer community groups. We, all, we, we have a subscription to Bible study curriculum. You have everything, probably more than other churches have. There's a great church out there. More than other churches have of resources on how to understand this. We simplified it so much. We actually pass out our daily bread. We give you everything that you need. But guys, this is what we do. We wander away from his righteousness. And because we think that righteousness belongs to us, we are rotten, nasty, polluted, disgusting people called sinners. But Jesus Christ died for us to make us right. This, let me show you a picture. You've probably seen pictures like this before. Joe, go ahead and throw it up. Have you ever seen that picture before of, of Jesus? That's probably not Jesus. He was, he's probably more... Um, um, what was it, Jewish and so on and so forth, but bad picture. But there's two things that you see there. One, he has a, what in his hand? Staff. And another thing, he's carrying a sheep. Oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Do you know why that sheep is being carried? What's that? It's, it's hurt, okay. It's weak, What? He wandered away. Good. All the answers correct. But this is what the shepherd does to a wandering away sheep. Have you ever wandered away from Jesus? Raise your hand. Did he have to? Let me ask you, all of us who raised, just raise your hand. Did Jesus Christ have to break us down in order for us to be turned around? Okay. Do you know why the sheep is like this? The sheep is like this because the shepherd has broken its leg. The shepherd, yes, the shepherd broke its leg 
because that sheep started to wander off, did its own thing, did its own desires, did whatever it wanted to do to seem righteous, but he wandered away just as the lost sheep parable, Jesus left the 99, went to find the one, and he took it and he rejoiced about it. But what the shepherd does, and especially in this culture, and David was a great shepherd, what he does is this. He takes the sheep and he breaks its leg. He doesn't kill it. He breaks its leg. And after he breaks its leg, he loves it enough to take the burden onto himself to carry around everywhere. And that's what Jesus Christ does to us. He breaks. You wander away? Guess what? He's going to break you down. And he's going to break you down. He's going to break you down. But he's going to carry you back. He's going to carry you to the path of righteousness. And guys, if you have wandered away, may this be that breaking of the leg moment. Don't be arrogant and start fighting off the shepherd and say, I know what you want. I know what you want. You're going to break my leg. Yes, he is. But you know what? The leg after it is restored and healed will be stronger than it had ever been before. Many of you are standing as pillars of this church and pillars of Christ following people because you, you, your testimony, as we say, you said, I was lost, but now I am found. I was broken, but he carried me through. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what this is talking about when it says this. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Jesus Christ is a glory hog. He wants all the glory for himself. He wants all the glory for himself. He wants all the glory for who? Himself. Because he deserves it. Follow down the path of righteousness. He will protect you. He will guide you. Even though it might seem weird, he will guide you in the path of righteousness. If you wander off, be ready for that broken leg. Stop wobbling around on your broken leg. And let him pick you up, let him put him on your shoulders, and let him bring you back into righteousness. For his name's sake. (sighs) Okay. Write this down. Jesus walks and comforts us through the valleys of the shadows of life. Jesus walks and comforts uh, with us through the valley of the shadows of life. Cheyenne, go ahead. You fix this prop for a second. Stay. Okay. Let me read this passage to you real quick. And I want to make an amazing depiction of of two things found in this verse. It says this. Verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they what? They comfort me. I'm going to read it again. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because, why will we fear no evil? Because He, you, Jesus, our shepherd, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Before I show this this illustration, what is talking about valleys and shadows valleys are and maybe some of you guys are in the valley right now the valleys deal with this things that you make you and cause you to be low and depressed and sad the valleys the depressed times so i'm going to ask you a question just shout it out um what it might not be you but maybe somebody else what are some low valleys people go through just shout them out hurt Hurt. good finances good what else What's that? Rejection. Good. What else? What'd you say? Death. Okay. Good. What else? Divorce. Good. What else? Cancer. What's that? Loneliness. Good. Depression. Good. 
Have you ever, let me ask you this question, have you ever been in a valley before that you're so low in your life that you don't think you can get through it? Have you ever been through that? That's what it's talking about, that low. And then it talks about this. It says a shadow. A shadow is what actually causes us to be afraid. So we have evil, the devil. This is like a really nice looking devil, but all right. But this is what we do, guys. This is, I'm going to try to do this the best way I can. We walk in our everyday life. And we're walking along and we're, everything's fine. And all of a sudden, we go into a valley. We go into the pits. We go into sadness. And then we walk on the shadows of life. The things that make us scared. And where is my eyes looking? My eyes are looking down at the what? Shadow. I'm looking at the shadow and I am scared. I am in the low part of my life and I am scared to death of a what? Shadow. The shadow, guys, is not going to hurt you. It's going to cover the light. Listen closely to me. We, if we walk with Jesus... He's going to walk and hold our hands through those scary moments because what he knows is this. He knows that the shadow is not going to hurt you. Whatever you're going through right now, if you are in a shadow moment, if you're scared about a situation, maybe you're scared about a job, finances, health, somebody else, you, you don't know what your marriage is going to do. Listen, it's a shadow. The shadow will sooner or later what? disappear why are we so worried about a shadow especially if we're walking with a shepherd I expect all of you to be scared to death of walking the shadows if the shepherd is not there because I love what it says here let me read it again it says even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will what Fear no evil. This is where the evil is. This is the evil one. The evil one has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to do everything he can to knock you on your butt. He says, yes, the shadow is not scary, but they are. He's going to cast a shadow, and this is what the devil wants you to believe. He wants you to believe that you're weak. He wants you to believe that the shadow is going to hurt you. But then it continues to say, it says this, even though I walk through the valley of shadow death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And then I love it. Your rod and your staff, they what? Comfort me. This is, and I'm not going to destroy this because we want to use this for another prop, but this, here, listen closely. The shepherd, let me see. Caleb, come over here for a second. All right? Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. Caleb represents most of you and me. <laughs> Caleb and I represent um, each and every one of us. Who you're in the shadows right now, Caleb. But as a Christ follower, this is what it looks like, ladies and gentlemen. This is what it looks like to walk through the shadows of death. The valleys that you're in. If you are with the shepherd. He is holding your hand and he is looking around. The sheep is focused in on the shadow. Focus on the shadow. And this is what the shepherd does. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. He's saying, hey, I know you're in the shadow, but back up. I'm in the way of the devil. And if the devil tries anything, I am going to whoop his tail with my rod. And the rod and the shield and the word of God is powerful enough. Even though we might be looking at the shadow and scared to death, but we don't see we don't see all around us as people who are trying to follow Jesus are people that are having the devil beat away and are other things because, again, the sheep are so focused in on their little world. But we miss what Jesus is doing to protect us all along. We might be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but Jesus Christ is in the shadows with you. He's in danger with you. And he's going around and said, uh, uh stay away. He might not even understand that this happened. Or this happened. Or this happened. 
But what's going to end up happening is sooner or later he's going to be over there and he is going to be peace. And then he's going to look at the shepherd and said the following, the rod and my staff have what? Comfort me. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Jesus Christ our shepherd. So if you are in the shadows, the shadows aren't going to hurt you. God, by the way, death is not going to even hurt you. To live is Christ and to die is gain. There's no worries. There's no need to worry if you, your finances are in the hole. Do something about it, yes. If your marriage is in the pit and it's your fault, pick your head up and say, Jesus, whoop on some people. But most importantly, whoop on me. You with me? Your rod and your staff will comfort me when you're in the shadows. You have overcome because of Jesus Christ. No, you're good, you're good, thank you. Do you get that? If you're in the valleys right now, don't be afraid. He's fighting for you. If you're in the shadows and you're scared about something, he's fighting for you. But let me say this. If you don't know Jesus, you're by yourself. Because he's not your shepherd. He's not your Lord. But he's mine. And I know when I'm in that valley, I don't need to be afraid. I don't need to be dismayed. Because the Lord my God is with me wherever I go. So again, if you are in the pits, if you're scared, pick your head up and watch what Jesus is doing around you and be comforted. All right. Let's go to the the last one. The last one is this. Now, before I go, here's some really cool verses. It says this. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guide your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. I love what Romans 8, 38 and 39, it says, I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels or demons, neither pres- this present or the future or, or any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God who is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is only to be claimed and to talked about for those who are actually followers of the shepherd. Last one is this. Jesus blesses those who follow his righteous path. Jesus blesses those who follow his righteous path. Now let me pause whenever in church world, there's people who, who take this word blessings and, and pollute it. If you would just give to the church above and beyond, you're going you're gonna to be blessed with a Lamborghini. If you would give to the pastor's um, Lamborghini fund, you're going to be blessed with, with all measures. If you would just buy this handkerchief with my sweat on it, you're going to be blessed forever. Are you with me? Listen, the blessings are your needs, not your wants. He knows what you want. He knows what your flesh n- wants, but he knows what you what need. These are a couple blessings, and I'm gonna, there's four of them that's going to breeze through this. It says in verse 5, You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. The first blessing is this, a prepared blessing. He's not surprised that you're following him because he's created you. He already knew you. He knows what's going to end up happening. Check this out. We talked about this last week. We talked about how Jesus, when he died on the cross, he, and he was buried, and he rose again, he came back, and when he left, the engagement of us, his church, his bride, happened. But what ended up happening is he left for a period of time. Why did he leave? To what? A place for us. To prepare a place for us. So let me tell you this, church. Even though he has not come back, he is preparing blessings for you in heaven. He is preparing that for you. And he wants to bless you. He wants to take care of you. He wants to give you all that you need here. But many of you are wandering off. He's like, you could have had this, but you went that way. 
This grass is greener and calmer over here, but you think it's calmer and cleaner over there. Stay with righteous Lord Jesus, our shepherd, and receive the prepared blessing that you could and will receive if you follow in his righteousness, because he will take care of all of your needs. The next one is this, and I love this one. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Remember we talked about this last week or the week before? What does oil represent? Whenever it's basically talked about in the Bible, what is it talked about? Holy Spirit. Whenever it talks about oil, it talks about anoint my head in oil. What it means is this. If you are truly a Christ follower and you have and you're following the shepherd, it means this. You're going to die to yourself and be filled with the Spirit of God and the power that He has for you to be able to do immeasurably more than you can even ask or imagine if you're filled with His presence. Which means the following. You know what the blessing is? The blessing is die to self, follow the shepherd, and be filled with amazing power and guidance and protection. And it says this. Your cup overflows. You're going to have more than you could ever need. You can have more than you ever would want because you're following the shepherd. Maybe all you need is a house over your head with ramen noodles. But you're doing what God has called you to do. That's what you need. Guys, listen closely to me. The Holy Spirit of God wants to use you in some mighty ways. But many of us are not here. We're here. Sheep wander. He wants to bring you back to himself. So maybe today, you are whatever angle away. Maybe you're completely off. Maybe you're this far. Die to yourself. Say you cannot do it and come back and be anointed by God's amazing Holy Spirit who's able to do amazing, amazing things. Ephesians 3, 20 uh, 20 verse 21. Now to him is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. The last two blessings real quick is this. Goodness and love for your lifetime. You prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I imagine it kind of like this. I'm, I'm a visual person. So we're walking around in life. And all of a sudden we hit a roadblock. And if we are following the shepherd, and we're still following the shepherd, but we hit a roadblock, and we're we're wanting to turn this way or this way. We pause, but we feel the presence of goodness of God behind us. We feel love behind us that only Jesus can give. And what it looks like is the, the, the angels are called ministering spirits. And they come along us and say, hey, you can do it. You can do it. The spirit of God inside you says, hey, Remember what happened before? Here's love. Here's guidance. Here's goodness. Here's good. Follow the straight and narrow. Follow him. It's okay. Have you ever just felt that goodness? Have you ever just felt that, oh, I'm in a roadblock, but, but shepherd, Jesus, help me. Lord, help me, help me. Then all of a sudden you open up your eyes and you have those goosebumps and you're like, oh, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. That is what will follow you forever if we're following the right path. And then the last one is the most exciting one for those who follow Christ. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord for how long? Forever. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Bible talks about this life is just a mist. One day you're here, one day you're gone. By the time your loved ones open up their eyes in heaven, you might be with them. Listen, don't, don't start doing your whole thing and putting stuff away because this is the climax. Pay attention. Forever is a long time. I am now 37, 6, 8. I feel like I'm 40. Okay. I feel like I've been on this earth a very, very, very long time. And some of you say, you know what, you, you, you have not even hit. When I was in my 30s, wow, I'm like 62. Even if you're 60 or 2 or 12 or 13, 
forever. Just imagine that. Forever with Jesus, forever and ever with the following. Revelation says this, for the lamb at the center of his throne will be their shepherd. The lamb, Jesus, will be, will at the center of the throne, will be their shepherd. He will lead them to the springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes forever. You'll be your shepherd forever. Now that's a blessing I like because this body hurts. This world sucks. But heaven, wow, that's an amazing blessing. But that heaven for eternity is only available to those who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So the question I have for all of you here, for one, is this. Do you really know the shepherd? Or do you, I think I know the shepherd. I've read Psalm 23 forever. I know more about the Bible than you, Dave. Great. That might result in you going for eternity into a place of eternal separation from your shepherd called hell. Do you know Jesus? Do you walk with Jesus? If you have any doubt in your mind, stop doubting and turn your life over to him. Maybe today is your breaking leg moment. Maybe today is your day when you're going to say, I surrender. I cannot do it myself. I don't know about all the answers about Jesus and God and the Bible, but I'm putting my faith and trust that I want that shepherd. I want that shepherd. I want that shepherd. So in a moment, I'm going to lead you through a prayer. The prayer does not save you. It's only that heartfelt desire to know the shepherd. But before we do, let's all read Psalm 23 in closing together. All together, that means you actually have to talk out loud. And I'm going to read it through the version that I have, the NIV. Um, Your red Bibles are a little bit different, so here we go. With me together, it says this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.